Good morning and welcome to Our Chicago. I'm Judy Sue. March is Women's History Month and our guest here this morning has made history right here in Chicago. Commissioner Annette Nance Holt is the first African-American woman to lead the Chicago's fire department. She has served with CFD for more than 30 years, breaking other barriers along the way. In 2018, she became the first black woman to be deputy commissioner. Chicago Fire Commissioner Annette Nance Holt joining me this morning. And Commissioner, first of all, we want to say a big congratulations for being a member of iHeartMedia Chicago's 2022 class of women who win. That list just came out. Congratulations on that. And thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. Sure. Thank you, Judy, for having me. Uh, we also want to start with that you are now approaching the one year anniversary of becoming, as we said, the first woman to lead the Chicago Fire Department. How are things going for you at the department? Do you still have moments where you say, wow, how far I have come? Definitely, I look at how far I've come but I look at how far I have yet to go before my tenure is up. There are so many things that I want to do before I retire from this department. So, like I say, I'm honored to be the lead of the best fire department, I say, in the country because it's mine. And I have hardworking paramedics and firefighters out there that make me look good every day, and I'm just honored. Well, it certainly has been quite a journey for you. We're going to ask you to take us back just a little bit on that journey. We've heard you say that becoming a firefighter was your dream as a child, but that you didn't think it was possible when you were young. Why? Well, actually, becoming a firefighter wasn't my dream because as a child, I had never encountered uh, an African-American woman or man firefighter uh, at that time. And of course, there weren't any women at that time who were firefighters in the city of Chicago. But I think not having the exposure, not knowing that that's something I could be or a job that I could look for as a career, um, it just happened that I went with my uh, then, then boyfriend and his brothers and some more friends and took the test on a dare because I was very athletic and I ran with them. I was in great shape and I was like, this sounds like a great opportunity. So that's why I took the test. Now, okay, now in terms of your career though, you didn't start off as a firefighter. You started out as a tax accountant, is that right? Right. I used to work for Arthur Anderson in corporate America doing taxes. And I started in high school, actually, my senior year of high school working for them and kind of continued on and off. And then I left there and came to the Chicago Fire Department when I got called for the class. And I know a lot, a lot of the managers were like, you're not leaving to be a firefighter. I was like, yeah, they didn't really think this is what I was going to do. But look at me, 32 years later best decision I ever made. Well, and that's the big question, right? You said that you really didn't see a role model in, in firefighting as a, as a child growing up, as a girl growing up. What, what made you in, in your head to think, I, I can do this? Well, really because I'm very competitive. I love a challenge and uh, I like helping people, you know, and I thought that meant everything that I wanted to do or things I wanted to move further in my career or just change career. So this was just an opportunity to do something that I thought would be very fulfilling for me in my life. And that's what happened. Wow. Well, in, in announcing your appointment, Mayor Lightfoot made a point of saying, and I'm quoting here, more work remains to eliminate discrimination, racism, and sexism from the firefighting profession. Commissioner, how much progress has the department made since your early days of becoming a firefighter? What were some of the challenges you dealt with, particular to women? Well, let me tell you this. I can tell you about my own experience. When I came in the door, I definitely was not welcome. And that was in 1990. And I used to wonder when I would go home after shift, why did I take this job? Why did I leave? Um, actually, I would cry some mornings when I went home. And then my husband and I had a small child. They never knew what I was going through because I didn't talk to them. Um, I think the fact that when I went to my first firehouse, they put dog food in my coat, stole my helmet, tried to play silly games, um, just things like that. But I had a great role model there, the captain on the truck who stood up and he was like, we're not having this. Uh, he was an African-American male, as a matter of fact, and he stood up and said no. And the other thing was something inside of me said, I'm not taking this. And I mean, eventually, you know, they stopped trying to play those games. But I figured that I was, I was determined to make a difference, make a change. And I joined the uh, African-American Firefighters League where I found other mentors who helped me along my way to get to the point I am at today. But there is a lot to be done even yet today. It might, be, it might not be the same type, but there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Well, you certainly have made a, a lot of progress in, in demonstrating a, as a role model. So, Commissioner, today, what is your message to women who may be interested in a career as a firefighter? And to a broader point, I think your message to young girls who dream of doing something that they don't necessarily see a role model yet that looks like them. Well, let me say there are two career paths, firefighter 
or paramedic. So I'm advertising for both. Um, if this is a great career, it's something that a lot of us never think about. And yes, it is a welcoming environment and we are making it better and better every day. We encourage all women who are meet the age requirements for firefighter when we have this entrance exam to apply for this job because I got to tell you, it is the best job I never asked for or planned for actually. And I have education degrees, everything. It it doesn't, you know, it didn't prepare me to think that I was gonna do this. But look at us now. And we're gonna keep on building upon this legacy of diversity inclusion in this department. Absolutely. Uh, we have so much more to talk about to ask you about the future of the department commissioner. We're going to pause our conversation right here. We will continue right after this. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.